Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my process for choosing curriculum. My name is Morgan here at The Life of Tillman's and I am so happy that you are here. This is curriculum season. It just is. It's just when we start looking for things and making decisions so that over the summer, we can be looking at it. At least that is how I do it. Right now, I am in the process of choosing curriculum. So if you wanna see what we're gonna be doing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But this process for me, it is very simple, yet it is strategic. Does anyone know what decision fatigue means? I suffer from decision fatigue sometimes, especially when I am choosing curriculum. So my strategy is set up so that by the time I am to the last child, I don't have to worry about that affecting my decision making. <laughs> okay guys, so my very first step when choosing curriculum is I choose the child that is the most difficult. And when I say that, I don't mean that the child themselves are difficult. I mean that who is the most challenging for me to choose curricula for within my household. That is who I start with. The reason why I do that is because I don't wanna make that child last because I will have decision fatigue, it will affect my decisions, and I might make some bad ones when it comes to choosing curriculum. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> don't wanna do that. So that is how I start. Number one, I choose the child that is the most challenging to choose curriculum for. The second step that I take is I sit down with each one of my girls individually. Now there are multiple steps that fall underneath step number two, but the first one of that is, I want to sit down with them and see where they are within the curriculum and how close they are to finishing it. This is just simply pull out your books, let's see what lesson you're on, let's work through that and see where we're going with it. This is also something that is a part of my spring reset. So it's easy, two birds, one stone, okay? I wanna know that. The next thing on the list is I wanna get from my girls how they feel about the curriculum, pros and cons, why they liked it, why they didn't. I do not accept things like it was boring or there wasn't enough color or there's no room for me to write here <laughs> because those things don't necessarily speak to how effective the curriculum is in teaching my child. Now, yes, I have a child that really loves color and if I can find that for her, I will, but I won't ditch a curriculum because it doesn't have color and that's what she likes. The next thing I do, and this is still under step number two while I'm with my children, is I think about my pros and cons for that curriculum and for my child. These are not things that I typically share with my girls because I don't want to sway their opinion. So I sit down with them, we look and see where they are, they give me their pros and cons, then I share my pros and cons because I don't want them changing their mind based off of what mommy says. I don't want them to like something simply because I like it or dislike it because I dislike it. So I give them an opportunity to really think and go through that process all on their own. And while we are talking about this, this is still step number two, I want to decide what they need and if what they're currently using fits those needs. Because if it doesn't, then guess what? We gotta go on a curriculum hunt. But this is a part of the process of sitting down and doing this with my girls. This really makes them feel included in the process because they are. I want them to know that their opinion matters, how they feel matters, what they're doing every single day matters because they're the ones who are doing the work, majority of it. Mommy is teaching a little bit here and supervising them, especially with my older girls. So I don't so much think about what works best for me as they get older. I think about what is going to work best for them based off of the fact that they have to learn it and they have to actually do the work. If you wanna see what we're gonna be doing for curriculum for the upcoming school year, make sure you subscribe because those videos will be coming out in about three to four weeks. Stick around. Okay, once we've gone through steps number one and two, I go to step number three. This is the budget. I need to sit down with my husband and with my girls too and talk about our budget for school. We do set a budget for homeschool. Do I always stick with this budget? I'm gonna be honest, no, I do not but I make sure to stay really, really close. I am not an extreme go over budget type of person, but I also do assess the needs. And if we are getting to a point to where we absolutely 100% without a doubt need something different, we will make that happen. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, we understand that it was necessary and I don't necessarily feel bad about that. But stick to your budget because that is what makes your household run and our budget is a guide. It is not written in stone, but it is a guide that we follow really, really closely. I will be sharing more details about how we budget, and sometimes it actually changes every year, guys, <laughs> because sometimes you put a budget in place and you're like, ooh, 
this worked or no, it didn't work. So our budget does change and it also changes with the income of our household. So stick around for budget information as well. Okay, after we've gotten our budget together and we are ready, now it is time to go to step number four, which is researching what we need and what is the best fit for that specific child. Mind you, I'm still on one child here, but the steps are the same for each one of my girls. I am going to research what I feel like they need if we are replacing a current curriculum. If we're going to do that, I have to get online. This is done at a computer. Do not do this from your phone. <laughs> it is so difficult to do it from your phone. It's small and all the things. Get on a large tablet, get on a computer, pull up all the windows so you can flip back and forth between each of those windows and compare what it is that you are looking for for your child. Keep that focus in your mind. I have a piece of paper sitting next to me. It has my child's name on it. It has the subject matter that I am looking for and I am tunnel vision for those specific things. That is how I research what they need and find what the best fit is. This next step, guys, is the last one. You simply buy and breathe. You hit click, buy now, click, click. Well, that's if you're ordering it online. <laughs> I order pretty much all of my curriculum online, but you buy it and you breathe. You can relax now. You have made those decisions. You're confident in what you've done. You have followed your steps for getting your curriculum and you feel good about what you've chosen. Everyone is on board with what has been chosen and it is done. 